All right, folks, so now we're gonna move on to some Pennsylvania Railroad equipment on display here. Um, the first um, historic piece of equipment we're looking at from the Standard Railway of America, or the Standard Railroad of the World, as coined by the PRR, is SW1 locomotive number 9408. Um, in Pennsylvania classification terms, this engine would be classified as an ES-6. <clears throat> This locomotive was built by Electromotive Division in September of 1950 and was, and was of 661 produced between December 1938 and November 1953. It was also one of 33 delivered between July and November of 1950. This locomotive has an Electromotive Division 567A prime mover of six cylinders and 600 horsepower V6 form. The locomotive later became Penn Central number 8568. Um, the later series of these locomotives um, would have a taller stack above the compartment of the engine, as well as a flat roof for the cab. Um, I also wanted to note that the Pennsylvania Railroad bought 85 of these units and could pull short trains to a factory or in a yard. Um, back in 1950, a gallon of gas cost about 18 cents. And the Diners Club issued the first credit cards, and the Korean War began during that time. That was also the age that many steam locomotives were being replaced by the modern diesel locomotives. All right, folks, let's go up into the cab of the locomotive and take a look inside. All right, folks, so this is the cab of the SW1 locomotives. You can see here this locomotive is equipped, which I believe is a number six brake stand. If you push the brake lever to the left a little bit farther, you have what's called charging. They'll help charge up your brakes. You don't want to overdo it too much. This is your independent brake. This is primarily the brake for the locomotive, which will operate the brake pads on the wheels. This right here is your reverser. You have neutral and reverse. Forward, neutral. This right over here is your power throttle. And on the floor, we have what's called a dead man switch. So as you start moving your throttle a little bit, you'll actually develop some, your amperage is gonna to start to develop up just a little bit. This is a little bit off because this engine hasn't run quite a while. This is the front locomotive looking out the engineer's side. Left side locomotive was for your head brakeman, which would look out the left side locomotive, make sure the track was clear and switches were aligned. This is your air brake pressure, tell you how much pressure is in the brakes. And I believe one of these valves here actually would control the bell of the locomotive. You turn the bell on and off. All right, behind me here, this round wheel here is basically your handbrake. This would help set the handbrakes on the locomotive. These are your cab lights located underneath the ceiling here. This would be for your headlight front dim headlight rear dim, gauge lights, cab lights, class and HO lights. And then this right here is the breaker cabinet. So inside you'd have a battery switch and then that would allow electricity. It's basically, basically like in your household, it's like a breaker cabinet. All right, this is the view of the locomotive looking out the brakeman side. I believe the bell in this locomotive is an EMD bronze bell, if I'm correct. And right up here is your dimmer switch. You can have front full, front medium, dim, rear medium, rear full. And then you'd also have switches for your generator field, and that would help send power to the wheels on the locomotive. This right here is your sandbox, and that would help provide sand for the locomotive to gain traction in case the locomotive would encounter wheel slip. All right, here's 9408 standing on the engineer's side. This right here is the fuel gauge, and oftentimes if you looked at the fuel tank indicator, you would sometimes see the indication for how many gallons are currently in the tank. Um, there is actually no identification at this time, though, but... You could, you could basically check your fuel to see if it was full or empty. You have your air tank, and then right underneath is the fuel tank for the locomotive itself. Here's the front of the locomotive. You have another sandbox here. 
And there's the headlight for the front locomotive. Headlight has to be on at all times, day or night. All right, folks, continuing on with our Pennsylvania Railroad tour here. This is Pennsylvania Railroad Railway Post Office Car or Rolling Post Office Car and Wheels, number 6518, classified under Pennsylvania Railroad classification as a BM70B. This was an example of a railway post office car that would be seen on the front of many passenger trains, including the Broadway Limited, which ran between Chicago and New York. And sometimes cars like these you would see on an entire mail train. Um, I believe this car was constructed in July of 1920. Now, until the 1960s, when the um, invention of supersonic jets superseded the railroad, uh, most U.S. mail money was actually moved by rail. Um, actually, this car, this ID, actually says this car was built in 1910. Railroads across the nation owned thousands of cars like this one for rental of the post office department. All the employees on board were United States Postal Service workers. What was also unique about some of the mail cars is that some of these cars would actually have a mail hook on board. So at each depot platform where mail was to be picked up on the fly, a mail hook would actually come out on the side of the car and you would actually catch the mail which would be hanging on a pole. If the train would suddenly have, suddenly miss the mail post, the next train would actually have to come and get it. Now, one of this car's sisters, um, 6510, is preserved at the Ohio Railway Museum in Worthington. So, many of these cars, again, as I mentioned, were retired in favor for supersonic jets and highway transportation, and there hasn't been any mail trains ever since, but... Um, mail could actually be sorted inside the car using pigeonholes, racks, and then you also had sorting tables. The, whole, the holes in the floor, if you ever walked inside these cars, would actually be used to hold the bags, and hence you had your sorting tables on board. All right, folks, let's move to the front of the train. All right, folks, this is Pennsylvania Railroad number 5888. This is an example of an electromotive division E8A1A passenger locomotive. Classified under Pennsylvania Railroad standards, it was an EP22. This was one of 74 out of a total of 450 cab units built between August 1949 January 1954. This locomotive was built in April 1950. 1950 by General Motors of Electromotive Division of LaGrange, Illinois. Um, this locomotive was later part of Penn Central as number 4288 when Penn Central was inaugurated in February 1968. The locomotive later became Amtrak number 295 when Amtrak was incorporated on May 1st, 1971. This locomotive came to the Railway Exposition Museum here, now today's um, Greater Railway Museum of Greater Cincinnati. Between 2004 and 2005, this locomotive had received cosmetic restoration. This locomotive, um, basically unique in its design, um, if you actually look at the front of this unit, many of these locomotives were known as bulldog nose units. You can actually look on the nose of the locomotive. It kind of resembles a bulldog almost. This locomotive is capable of developing 2,250 horsepower with two 12-cylinder engines and is equipped with a 567B prime mover. All right, folks, that just does about it for our video here. Please stay tuned for more great train videos on this channel as soon as they become available. NS Steampunk reporting live from the Railway Museum of Greater Cincinnati here in Covington, Kentucky. Tower 93, over and out.